the beauty of Katsa is that it only has power as a threat. They're not actually going to impose it because you saw it, there's many loopholes, but they're going to make a big show that, oh, we were threatening to do it, but then we didn't. But now you're beholden to us. Remember, we did you a favor. Now, you know, you have to let our missionaries come. You have to go easy on Pakistan. They're in a difficult situation. You have to abstain on XYZ uh, UN resolution. But I say we should actually provoke sanctions. Let, let's see how serious they are. Should deliberately provoke the US. They keep wanting to threaten us with sanctions. Let them do their worst. I would welcome it. Please sanction us and watch all the goodwill that uh, you've carefully accumulated dissipate and you'll create a generation like Iran of anti-American sentiment within the country. And the last time we were sanctioned by the US, it was after our nuclear tests during the Vajpayee administration. That was actually one of the golden periods of infrastructure development, of economic growth. Uh, it didn't have any negative impact and it actually strengthened our sovereignty. The threat of the sanctions is much more scary than the actual yes. impact of them. Absolutely. And uh, the harsher the sanctions, you know, how harsh will they make it? At one point, it'll just affect them. If they put uh, sanctions on, on us saying that, oh, now we can't buy uh, US military equipment. That's just a sophisticated form of protectionism. They're just saying, you know, you can't buy uh, Russian stuff, you have to buy ours. Then you know, we don't buy that much of theirs anyway. We went uh, 70 years without buying US military equipment. We'll keep buying from France and keep buying from Russia. So no loss. Uh, if they put citizen to citizen sanctions, saying that, oh, you know, we're going to bar, let's say, these uh, politicians or these uh, civil servants and uh, diplomats from coming to the US very good <laughs> then you know their kids won't go to, to harvard uh, kennedy school and go uh, to yale uh, on uh, these uh, psyop and cultivation uh, efforts uh, very good and if they put it even stricter and they say oh no more citizen to citizen uh, collaboration uh, no more uh, indian students coming to the us then yeah we'll find other places to go or we'll uh, be forced to uh, strengthen our own institutions. 15 years ago, a lot of Indian students used to go to the UK. Then when David Cameron came to power in uh, 2010, he uh, increased the fees, he made it uh, unattractive for Indian students, uh, he said that uh, they wouldn't get a work visa after they studied, so Indian students went elsewhere. And now you have a whole generation of Indian students and uh, young professionals in non-English speaking countries who are exposed to a different style of thinking, a different uh, style of politics, a different culture of nationalism and uh, realism. And that's actually quite healthy for our society to decouple ourselves from the hegemonic power of the US or the UK and learn from other sovereign states how to be a sovereign state and how to leverage our uh, human resources and power. Thank you.